What is going on guys, Vlad here with AsolusPLC.com. If you enjoy videos on PLC programming, HMI development, or any other application development for industrial automation, consider hitting this subscribe button down below on your screen. And of course, the notification bell to receive the latest videos that I will be putting out on this channel. Without any further delay, let's get into today's video. All right, so in one of the last videos, we've implemented an alarm system which would capture all of the alarms that would occur in our system. But actually today at work, I had to implement something which would capture the first alarm that is occurring on the system. And this is important because in a scenario that we've developed a couple of lectures ago, what's going to happen is essentially all the alarms are going to come on if you shut down the tank. So for example, Think of a system which has multiple pumps, multiple tanks, and for whatever reason you have a high temp alarm, well, you're going to immediately cut off you know, your pumps, you're going to cut power potentially to your tanks, you're going to stop valves, so chances, or you're going to evacuate everything, so chances are you're going to have a lot more alarms. So what happens in that case, everybody's trying to address the faults but they don't necessarily know which one was the first one. And the first one is usually the cause of all the other alarms. So to demonstrate kind of a capability to detect the first fault, we're going to use a couple of basic instructions that you've learned in some of the other instructional videos. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, is I'm going to clear a uh, essentially an integer, which is going to be uh, taken from this n7 and let's expand that as well so I'm going to right click that hit properties and instead of having one we're going to have uh, 100 of these integers I'm going to hit ok double click that once again n70 is going to be our first candidate so here I'm going to create I'm going to I'm going to click this I'm going to create a move instruction I'm going to right click this change instruction type and this is going to be a move and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a zero into this uh, into this integer. And the reason why I'm moving a zero is going to be when there's absolutely no alarms. So the way to figure out if there's no alarms, of course, as you remember, our reset button resets all the alarms. And our reset button should reset all of the faults. And of course, if the alarms fail to reset, we also want to capture the first fault, which is going to be the case as we will see in just a second. So we can either tag on to any of these buttons or we can tag on to the bit, which is the system fault reset. So I'm going to go back into faults and whenever that is pressed. So of course that can be actuated by the two buttons or the HMI screen as we talked about in the previous video. And we're going to move this zero into this register. And now what we're going to do is, depending on the fault, we're going to move a different integer. So here we have alarm one, two through five. And what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to uh, edit this rung and I'm going to look at, so here actually in RSLogix 500, it's a little bit different because I cannot put two instruction outputs on the same rung. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a rung that's going to be beneath the same alarm. And if, let's see here, so I guess we did not copy that properly. So let's copy this once again, control C. We're going to go back, control V. And if the alarm is activated, um, but we also, so if the alarm is activated, let's go here, XIC. Change instruction type XIC. Um, but if we do this for all of the alarms, then of course you're going to move whatever the value is going to be positioned in the last value and you're going to constantly shift integers. So what you need to do is you're going to do a comparison. And this is another instruction that we've, uh, that we've used before. So it's just going to be an equals instruction. Actually, it's going to be not equal. So if it's not equal to zero, but if it is equal to zero, sorry about that. If it is equal to zero, the, and the uh, fault has been activated, then we want to capture that particular fault. So that's what the rung is going to look like. And we can copy this, paste that right, paste that after the, after the next alarm. So RSLogix 500 is a little bit finicky in that sense because it does paste above the rung versus RSLogix 5000 pastes below the rung. But anyways, so here we of course need to change to a one. 
and we're going to do that for every single alarm. So essentially what happens is if the register is at zero, so this should be when there's absolutely no alarms and it sees an alarm, it's going to only record that one alarm into that register. So here we're going to have a three. And of course we need to change this as well. Instead of being zero, this is going to be a two. Let's just double check. Yeah. And we'll do it for the un. I guess unidentified faults as well. So here we're going to have four, no, we want to have three. And of course here we're going to have four and the numbers are going to be accordingly three. And then here we're going to have four. And let's just double check. I want to make sure that the numbers are correct. So let's start from the beginning. So one, two, three, four so here we need a four i'm going to change that four and then let's see here we need a five so essentially each fault gets an identifier which is based on just the number that we've assigned them and you can expand this to whatever you need wait this is this should be five okay yeah that's right that that's a four this is a five and of course the button will reset wait no this is a zero i change the wrong one. This is a zero because that's our reset. So when a fault reset is hit, it's going to set a zero. Let's compile all of this, make sure that there's no errors. Everything looks good. We're going to save this program once again, and then we're going to run that through the emulate. So I'm going to stop the currently running program. I'm going to close out of it. I'm going to reopen the program, put it in station one, hit okay, hit run. And now we should be able to once again, go online. Let's see here, go online. All right, cool. So we see that. Uh, so first of all, the register is already set to zero. So we're going to manually toggle a fault, which is so first of all, we can't toggle this as you remember, we cannot shouldn't be able to uh, well, I guess it turns off in this case, uh, we can toggle it, but it's going to be toggled for one single rung in that case. And let's untoggle that fault. And let's see. So the first fall that we triggered was obviously the one that's going to be above here, but um, the one that's going to be here, but that also triggered the second one with the same bid. So that being said, it's uh, extremely rare to have something that occurs within the same rung scan. But if that's the case, then of course, uh, nothing protects you from that. But hopefully, uh, your logic does not depend on that. And let's go back to the reset just so we can try this one more time. So we're going to toggle this reset button on the HMI. Of course, that would need to be set up through the HMI. So the fault register is once again at zero, as you can see right here. So that's all zero. And if we toggle, so like for example, this first fault and toggle bit, and let's say this alarm goes away and then the system is still faulted, we haven't reset it yet, then obviously based on the logic, even if this, for example, goes to minus 50, and this alarm triggers. Now the operator knows that there's certain alarms that are still present. So there's going to be this fault one and there's going to be this fault three. That being said, what we've captured is that alarm one came on first. And that's uh, like I said, it's a critical piece of information because you want to highlight the alarm which caused all these subsequent alarms. And this is done in many systems, including some of the scatter platforms that you might be used to and might be working with in the field. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.